Before I continue, please excuse the background noise and also sorry for over explaining things. I tend to do that, so sorry about that in advance. All right, so this tutorial will show you how to synchronize two calendars in SharePoint. I will take the events that are created in calendar one and uh, put them in calendar two. Whenever an event is created in here, you'll see it in here in calendar two. Whenever an event is created in calendar one, or updated in calendar one, you'll see the same change in calendar two for the corresponding item, right? Because if I change an event in calendar one, I want to see that event updated in calendar two, right? I don't want to create new events whenever something happens, whenever um, some uh, an event is updated in here. I want to update the corresponding event in calendar two. All right. so. How do we do that? We have to make a slight change in calendar two. And by slight change, I mean you have to create a column to record the ID of the event from calendar one. So let's do that. Do that. I will go to calendar two. I'll click on calendar and I'll go to list settings, right? Because a calendar is basically a list. And I'm going to go down here and click on create column. And the column name will be self-explanatory is going to be named calendar one ID and I'm going to make it an integer a number all right so the purpose of this column is to store the ID of the event from calendar one all right that would be the link between the two events in the two calendars that would be the reference all right so I named it calendar one ID. I make I made it a number and I'm going to click OK. And that's it. That's the only change that I have to make in calendar two. I don't have to touch anything in calendar one. All right. Now let's switch to uh, Power Automate. I'm going to create a new flow, an automated flow that will start with a trigger when an item is created or modified. When an item is created or modified is not an, when a, an event is created or modified because calendars are not supported in Power Automate, right? You cannot pick a calendar. Um, although a calendar is a list, uh, the official answer that you'll get from Microsoft support will be that calendars are not actually supported by uh, the uh, SharePoint connector. Okay. Lists, however, are supported and I'll, I'll show you what I mean by that. When I pick the trigger and I select the super team site in here, you'll see that calendars don't show up in here. So if, if I want to search for calendar is not in here. Okay. So as a list type, right? because it's not a general list it doesn't show up in here so how do we reference it we just add it as a custom item like like so okay let me zoom in so I'm just gonna um, reference it by name I know the name from here okay so I'm just gonna pick this copy paste and click OK this trigger will listen to two events created or modified so this flow will run whenever an item is either created or modified all right so remember that I configured the the trigger so the next step is for me to check if I have a corresponding event in calendar 2 okay so how do I do that I uh, I uh, use the get items action and again I'm going to reference the same site but this time I'm going to look in the second uh, list in the second calendar so calendar 2 all right now it's not enough to get the items from calendar 2 we have to narrow down to the actual event that matches the event from calendar one all right so how do we do that we use filter query so filter query will look like this calendar one id 
column equals, right? So this is the column name. So we're looking in calendar two in this column to see if it if it equals, right, the ID that's coming from calendar one, all right? So that's what we need to do to get the corresponding item, although this is plural, we don't have um, an action, a get item action that would allow us to use a filter query, okay? So that's why we use get items because get items actually allow us to use a filter and in the filter we can actually reference the column where we can find the corresponding ID from calendar one. I hope I made that clear. All right, so we don't have to do anything else in here. The next step that we have to uh, do here is to add a condition. So next step, condition. And in the condition, we will evaluate the result from get items. And how do we do that? We look at the get items array if it's empty or not. All right. So we do that with an expression. The expression is going to be empty. The empty function looks at a collection, right? The collection can be an array and it will, it will return a Boolean value. All right. So if get items is empty, it will return true. All right. So in between the two brackets here of the function, I'm going to switch to dynamic content and pick the value list of items. As you can see here, I'm going to pick the list of items that are coming from get items. Okay. So we're looking inside the body of the get items inside the value array. Okay, so remember whenever you see value, you should know that this is an array. All right, click OK. So the condition is, is the array empty? Yes or no? And we set the value here is equal to true. Okay. And we add it as an expression because when you add it as an expression, it will be evaluated as a Boolean value, okay? If you type it like this, it's not gonna work because this is a string, okay? So this returns a Boolean, right? This is a string. So you cannot actually compare a Boolean to a string. This will always be false because a Boolean will not be equal to true string. It will be equal to true boolean. Let me remove this. All right. So this is the correct evaluation that you can do between a boolean, right? You com you're comparing two boolean uh, values. It's very important. All right. Now, so what are we evaluating here? We're evaluating evaluating to see if this is returning an empty array. If it's returning an empty array, then we don't have any items in calendar two that would match the um, item in calendar one, which means we have to create a new item in calendar two, right? So how do we do that? We go on the yes container here because that evaluation is now matched. We don't have any items. So go ahead and create an item. So it's important when you do this to pay close attention to what you pick inside the create item action. So where are we creating this? In calendar two, right? Okay. What you pick in here is not the items from get items right it's not is not from here but from let me let me do a search so i'm looking for what i'm looking for title right okay title get items has title when an item is created or modified has title so we want to pick the output from the trigger because this is the item that's being created 
right? We don't want to pick anything from get items. So be pay close attention to what you put in here. You have to put all the dynamic items that are coming from the trigger, not from get items. All right. So again, title, start time again from the trigger end time again from the trigger and I'm not gonna uh, fill everything in here and what's important so after I'm done with this it's very important to put the reference the reference is calendar one ID all right and this comes from um, here. So now I'm basically linking the item, the event that I'm creating in calendar two with the event that I uh, took from calendar one. Okay. So this is the link. So it's important to put this in here. Not from get items, right? From when an item is created or modified. And that's it. So this will create the item, the event in the second calendar. If we don't have any corresponding existing event in calendar two. All right. But if we have a corresponding event in the second calendar, we go on this branch here in the if no container. And in here we have to update item. Now again, you have to pay close attention to this process, how you configure the update item. All right. So I'm going to pick super team site again. And again, I will pick the list. So the list is calendar two. We know that the item exists in calendar two. What do we want to update? We want to update the item that's coming from get items. Okay. So we want to pick the ID from get items. Okay. But what do we want to put in here? We want to update the fields with the values that are coming from the trigger. Okay. Because we made a modification in calendar one, right? So now I want to pick all those values that were modified and I want to see them in here. So I'm going to continue to configure this with dynamic item that's not coming from get items, but it's coming from the trigger. Okay. So again, we're, we're configuring this with items that are coming from the trigger when an item is created or modified. All right. Title start time. Right, end time. Uh, end time. And of course, the calendar one ID, which is coming from the trigger. And that's it. That's all you have to do. Remember the update item is looking at the ID from get items, but it's updating the item with the item with the dynamic um, items from um, from the trigger. So it's updating the event with this with the stuff that's coming from here. All right. Now you may ask, well, why? Why is the update item inside and applied to each container? Well, it's because when we're referencing the ID from get items, we're looking inside an array. All right. So we're looking inside this array that's coming from get items. Whenever you're referencing something that's coming from an array, automatically power automate will put that action inside and apply to each because you might have more than one item that uh, needs to be processed. All right. Well, in this case, if you did everything right, you will always have one item in the apply to each. You're not going to have more than one. Okay. However, because that one item is inside an array, Power Automate will do the right thing and put 
uh, the action inside the apply to each container. That's the logic there. I can elaborate more on that one on a separate tutorial and how to how we can get rid of the apply to each. All right. So let's save it. It's saving. Awkward uh, waiting moment. Okay, it's saved. Let me go back. Okay. And if I did everything right, when I create a new uh, event in here, so this would be a test event. I'm not going to do anything in here. I'm just going to click save and that's it. So on 26th, uh, between 9 p.m. and 10 p.m., I should have an event, a corresponding event in calendar two. I don't have it. Let me refresh. And now you can see it. Okay. Let's see the run. All right. So this is the run succeeded. And it should have went to the left side through the yes branch. Condition, yeah, it created the item, right? Because obviously there was, there were no items that would match uh, that criteria, and that criteria was this: calendar one ID equals to three. Obviously, this was empty, so it didn't find anything, and the value array is empty, and because that's empty, it went through this uh, way, right? So let's let's update the item. Okay, and I'm just going to go back, double click, edit, 10 p.m., 10.30 p.m. Now, if I did everything right, this should, have, should update with 10.30 in calendar 2. Okay, save. So now this is uh, 9 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. I'm going to refresh here. Do another refresh and there you go it updated so let me show you that run f5 this is the run and it went this way now okay as you can see one item right it updated the item. Okay. Now, if we look at the list view, uh, we should see. Let me click on this. There you go. So, this is where we store the reference. Okay. As long as this is not changed, okay, this calendar event in calendar two will always look at calendar one event here. Because if we double click on this, well, I shouldn't go here, I should go to uh, calendar again, and then all events, modify this view, sorry. And there you go. This is the ID. Okay. So that's the connection between the two events. I hope I made that clear. Thank you.